welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is jerry and as you guys know i love to talk about things on this channel related to spirituality healing herbs all those types of things so if you love to learn about those things or if you love to talk about those things feel free to subscribe and leave a like below for this video because i know you're gonna love this video already and if you didn't read the title today's video is going to be about working with the ancestors Working with your ancestors isn't strictly a hoodoo thing. This is something that many other religions and cultures, hoodoo is not a religion per se, but um, many other religions and cultures do, natives do it, a lot of other cultures and religions do this. So I hope that this video can be assistance to all different cultures, all different ethnicities and everything like that. I hope everyone can gain something from this video because my intention with this video is to spread knowledge, to allow you guys to learn. So this video is gonna be broken up into four parts. Number one is who can work with the ancestors in terms of hoodoo. In terms of hoodoo, it's going to be who can work with the ancestors. Two is going to be finding out about your ancestors. So in this area, we'll be discussing all types of things you can do to learn about your ancestors. And three is going to be building a bond, building a bond with your ancestors, establishing a relationship with your ancestors and all those things, how to go about it and everything like that. Four is going to be setting up an altar, how to set up an altar. Now, if you look behind me, you can see my altars all behind me, my money altar, my self-love altar, and then my ancestral altar. On my ancestral altar, um, I have their pictures facing down so you can't see their faces. And don't come trying to try me and my ancestors because I promise you, you don't want to do that. Not a threat, it's a warning. So that's that on that let's go ahead and get started with the video topic one is going to be who can work with the ancestors i have my notes here so that i can hit all the bullet points that i want to hit in terms of this video so who can work with the ancestors in terms of hoodoo anyone who is of african-american descent can work with the ancestors if you have one black parent you can work with the ancestors if you have two black parents you can completely work with the ancestors like there's no ifs about it as you may or may not know hoodoo does not really have an initiation process in terms of traditional initiation so if you know with atrs other atrs such as lakumi ifa Obe, all those other um, African traditional religions, they have initiation processes. You have to be initiated in order to work with certain spirits, certain Orisha, in order to do certain things. In terms of hoodoo, there is no traditional initiation process. In terms of hoodoo, I like to think of the initiation process as our ancestors, the things that they went through in terms of slavery, in terms of colonization, and all of those things, that was the initiation process, okay? The way that our ancestors were beat, the way that they were taken advantage of, if you know what I mean, the R word, the way that they were taken advantage of, the way they were kidnapped, and so many other brutal things that were done to our ancestors, that was initiation enough for us to be able to practice now. That was initiation enough for us to take the initiative to work with the ancestors, to take the initiative to venerate our ancestors. And that's something we'll be getting more into later. As far as right now goes, there is no traditional set initiation process. Hoodoo is very specific to the person. Everyone learns different types of hoodoo. For me, I'm from Louisiana, so there there is a very different things that we do in terms of our hoodoo. If you were in Mississippi or Alabama per se, there might be different things that you do in terms of your hoodoo, but hoodoo is very specific to a person. For me, I might like to give my ancestors a certain type of food because that's where we're from, that's what they do or whatever, whatever. And you may like to give your ancestors a completely different thing than what I like to give mine. That is because hoodoo is very specific to the person. There's no two types of hoodoo. There's no complete rule book for hoodoo. There is no step by step by step by step to hoodoo. It's all about 
working and learning yourself, learning your ancestry, learning where you come from, ha talking to your elders if you can, all those types of things. That is what hoodoo is. It is molded to fit you, molded to your magic is what I like to say. It's molded to your magic, okay? Before we move on to our next topic, I wanna talk about why we venerate our ancestors. Why in hoodoo do we have to venerate our ancestors? In hoodoo, we like to venerate our ancestors for a multitude of reasons. If you wanna be, you know, technical about it, it can be because our ancestors, they are in the ancestral spiritual realm. We are in the physical realm, on the physical plane, right? We have food, we have access to food, we can eat, we can do all those types of things ourselves. Our ancestors, however, cannot. Because if our ancestors, if they was just walking in our house, like their spirits are just in our house, they're going in the kitchen, grabbing a glass, filling their glass up with water and drinking it, and you just see a floating glass, you would freak out, right? Okay, so we venerate our ancestors, one, to strengthen them so that they can protect us better or so that they can protect us in a way in the spiritual realm that maybe we can't protect ourselves, right? If our ancestors are eating, if we're feeding our ancestors, if we're giving them water and we're making sure that they're strong, if we're leaving prayers as offering to them, they're strong, they can protect us, they can do the things that we can't do for ourselves. They can see things that we can't see. So we take care of them sometimes as a thanks for that, as a thanks for that protection. And sometimes just to ensure that they are stable, they are secure so that they can in turn give that to us. Stability and security in our physical plane. Another reason to venerate our ancestors is just because we love them, okay? We just love our ancestors. We love our ancestors because some of us know our ancestors. My great, great granny is on my altar. That is someone who is very touching to my mother, my grandmother, my granny. She was very involved in my mother's life. So I thank her for taking care of my mother because I know without my granny, there would be no mom. And in terms of having no mom, there would be no me. So I'm thankful to my granny for taking care of my mother in the way that she did, taking care of her in the way that she continues to do even in the ancestral realm. So this is why we do these things. We take care of our ancestors because our ancestors take care of us. This is why we take care of our ancestors. If you're looking for a because, that's the because. Because they take care of us. Okay, so that's for number one as to who can work with the ancestors, why we work with our ancestors. And I also want to throw a little bit of spice in there and tell you who the ancestors are. Ancestors do not have to be blood, number one, because I have my step-grandfather on my altar. Why do you ask? This is not someone I'm connected to by bloodline or anything like that. This is because of the things that he did in his living life. I knew him. He took care of us. He took care of my brother. He took care of my grandmother. I knew him. I know what he did for my family. I know that we loved him like family. I know that he loved us as if we were his blood family. We were the ones to organize his passing on. We were the ones to pay for all of those things. So in terms of that, we take care of him okay if that makes sense we take care of him even if he is not blood related to us okay that is something that i wanted to go ahead and say about ancestors don't have to be blood an ancestor is typically someone in your life an ancestor can be living as well an ancestor can be an elder who is your ancestor you know so an ancestor is a spirit or a living person who is either in your family by blood or someone who took care of you as if you were blood okay these are people that we venerate these are energies that we venerate that we uplift so that they may uplift us in the physical realm now we're going to go ahead and move to section two finding out about your ancestors <laughs> in this area i'm going to be talking about how you can discover your ancestors how can you trace your ancestors how can you figure out who your ancestors are so as i stated previously there are many ways to find out about your ancestors. Ancestors don't have to be blood. They can be step ancestors. Like I said, my step grandfather. And by this, I mean, he just married my grandmother, my blood grandmother. So he was a step grandfather. They can also be half family. If you have a half sibling who has passed on, they can be venerated as an ancestor and all those types of things. And also another thing I wanna to touch on is people always question like, when can I put someone on my altar? If someone recently passed, when can I put them on my altar? You typically want to wait about a year for their energies, for their spirit to fully transition.
transition and so that they can be settled in the ancestral realm. You don't want someone who passed on who may have been very anxious or having a lot of negative energies around them in this life to be on your altar immediately because they may still harvest some of that negative energy. So you want to wait until they fully transition. Some people like to wait for a year and a day. You can wait up to a year or however long you want to wait, but you do want to try and wait until a year before you add someone on your altar. A common way to find out about your ancestors, at least that I've heard a lot and also what I've done to find out about some of my ancestors, is to use Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com. This is something that has been used multiple times, not just by me, but by other people as well, to use Ancestry.com. This is something that you can do. All you have to do is put you, then put your parents, your, your mom, your dad. You can learn about your dad's side, learn about your mom's side. You know, everyone's an ancestor. <laughs> so you put your parents and then you put their parents if you know them. If not, then you should be able to trace back with the census and everything like that. If your family did the census and all those types of things, you should be able to trace back and go all the way back. I went back about five generations. I found my great, 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 great grannies, my great, 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 great grandfathers, great, 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 great uncles. They're all great. <laughs> so I found all of them this way by doing this. And then I got confirmation by being on the phone with my grandmother, my momo. I got on the phone with her and um, I had her confirm the information that was being shown. So if I saw, okay, this person has the name that you gave me. So here's the birthday. Does this sound right to you? And she would confirm and I'll be like, okay, so this is someone who's in my bloodline, someone who's in my family. So that's a way that you can do it. Have a grandmother, grandfather, an elder on the phone. If that's what you have to do, if you can't meet them in person, do that and discuss with them that way another way that i did um was i was talking to one of my great aunts and this just came about we weren't even talking about ancestors we weren't talking about hoodoo she doesn't know i do hoodoo as far as i know because she's christian very very christian that's another day that's another topic for another day about um christianity and hoodoo going hand in hand but that's another a whole nother topic but I was talking to my great aunt and I was telling her like, oh yeah, we should get together, do a family reunion. And she started sending me many, many pictures, many, many photographs of my ancestors, of my ancestors. She was sending me pictures and I was like, wow, like it really does play out. And this was very early in my hoodoo journey, by the way. So no one really knew like that. I didn't really tell a lot of people during this time. So she just started sending them to me. And that is how I got some of the pictures on my altar. That is how I received some of the pictures on my altar. And I put them on my altar and those spirits are now being venerated directly. If you don't have photos, if you don't have photos of your ancestors, it is okay to use a list of names. As you can see over there, that's my list of names right over here if you can see it but um you can list their names right list them by name and then call out their names when you're calling out to them like oh i'm calling out to blank blank in order to venerate your spirit and honor you and leave you gratitude all those things right so that is a way that you that is another way that you can discover your ancestors and all those types of things and also if you ask your ancestors to reveal themselves they will trust me they will if you ask them to show yourself to me they're going to show themselves to you. So if you're ready to start venerating your ancestors, if you need assistance in discovering about your ancestors and who your ancestors are, then I suggest literally just speaking. The, the tongue, the throat chakra, the tongue is the most powerful thing that you will have and you will learn that on your journey, that your words are impeccable. So the things that you say, if you are actively saying, I'm calling out to my benevolent ancestors, I am making it known my my head is tingling right now because they must have just showed up but um if you call out to them i'm calling out to my benevolent ancestors i am making it known that i know you i know that i can venerate you so make yourself known to me right and they will make themselves known to you so that's another way and it will come in all different ways like i said my great aunt just randomly started sending pictures and we was talking about family reunion i don't even know how we got there but yeah so it will come in a bunch of different ways but they will make their presence known to you some ancestors like to come in dreams my granny my great granny she loves to come in my dreams she loves to show up and just be like you're doing great you're doing great giving me that motivation don't give up 
you got it my child <laughs> those are ways that you can find out about your ancestors remember ancestry.com and also talking to your elders word of mouth and another way that i did i would talk to my great granny who is still alive she's in her 80s and i talked to her got some about her life story and i found out a lot of stuff that i didn't know about her these things that i didn't even know she gave me her brothers and sisters names her father's name her mother's name and all different types of things and that helped me tremendously in finding out about my grandfather's side of the family my mother's father in his side of the family that helped me tremendously so chapter three all right you guys we're on chapter three chapter three is going to be about building a bond <laughs> how do you establish a bond with your ancestors once you know that you can practice hoodoo when, once you have the pictures once you have the names how do i build the bond how do i connect with them how do i talk to them we have three main things that you can do in order to build that bond with your ancestors the first thing is going to be communication say it with me now communication what does commune mean to converse or talk together usually with profound intensity intimacy etc interchange thoughts or feelings what does commune mean okay coming together talking like i was saying that throat chakra be impeccable with your word talk with your tongue word of mouth is the most powerful thing that you can have speak it into existence talk to them call out to them literally you can just say thank you ancestors for whatever um i'm talking to my ancestors right now i'd like to do blah blah and blah right you can do those things use your tongue use your word of mouth talk to them you don't need an altar this is things that you can do without an altar you don't need an altar talk to them say it out loud just communicate with them if you're having a hard day just be like ancestors benevolent ancestors i'm having a hard day i've been really stressed out and then watch how you get blessed the next day okay so that's one thing another thing that you can do is offerings now an offering can be anything an offering can be a rock I actually have um, a rock on my altar. It's not just like a crystal. It's like literally just a heart-shaped rock. So, <laughs> so those are things that you can do, things that you find outside. I like to put leaves on my altar. One time I put a four-leaf clover on my altar. So there's a bunch of different things that you can put on your altar. And not even just on your altar, but if you don't have an altar, if you have a corner in your kitchen, you can put some food aside in the kitchen and say this is for my benevolent ancestors put a glass of water put some food and that's enough and if you want you can use a little tea light a little tea light candle they're very very cheap you can get a whole pack of a hundred for like five dollars at walmart light you a little tea light a cup of water and some food in a corner in your kitchen or at the dinner table you can sit at the dinner table and leave it there as if they were sitting there and you say this is for my benevolent ancestors i leave it with the utmost honor gratitude and whatever you want to say and yeah that's another way offerings anything can be an offering when people when people are drinking their alcohol and they're outside and they say i'm pouring one out for the dead homies who do you think the dead homies are oh, okay yeah so that is another way to ancestor venerate you can also can blow smoke out at your altar you can blow smoke at your altar or you could just say this is from my ancestors and when you blow out blow it out with the intentions of giving that smoke to your ancestors as an offering okay so if that makes sense if you got a drink and you want your ancestors to have some pouring out for my benevolent ancestors pour it on the ground you know that is something that you can do that's simple you don't need an altar this is ways to build a bond before you even set up an altar lastly gratitude 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 so you can't see it behind me but i have a gratitude jar here my gratitude jar so gratitude is something that is so powerful so powerful in spirituality being thankful being grateful showing that gratitude to your ancestors if you want you don't need an altar for this just say out loud benevolent ancestors thank you for protecting me today thank you for providing me with this blessing today thank you for making sure that i woke up today all these different things that you can thank your ancestors for thank you for providing me with financial stability thank you for providing me with a bed to sleep in it doesn't need to be something crazy it doesn't need to be something outrageous it could just literally be thank you for allowing me to open my eyes today 
show them gratitude show them gratitude and they will come these are things that you can do to build a bond with your benevolent ancestors that's also another thing you also want to be specific with the ancestors you're calling upon you don't want to call upon ancestors who have malicious intentions towards you some ancestors don't like us let's just keep it a bean some ancestors do not like us some ancestors don't want to work with us and I know from experience, there was one ancestor on my altar. This was someone who had passed on. I was at his funeral, actually. I was there when he passed. I saw him before he passed. I was there when he passed. And yet and still, he did not want to be on my altar. I would try and venerate him and his candle would have this little puny flame every single time. Every other candle would be so high, so bright, vibrant, filled with life. And his, his candle, tiny little flame. And so I remember I had did some divination and I was like, okay, well, he don't want to be on the altar. Let me leave him alone. Some ancestors, and it could also be that his spirit has already um, been reincarnated. His soul or his spirit might have been in another body by the time I tried to venerate him because he had passed a while ago, a long time ago. So he may have already been reincarnated into someone else. He may have had something to come back and do you know if that makes sense so yeah that could be why it could also be that he just didn't want to be bothered he didn't want to be bothered with me he was just like look girl i didn't pass on leave me alone for real so i mean i don't blame him i would probably be that kind of ancestor myself like look i didn't pay my debts i didn't did my dues leave me be some ancestors don't want to be bothered. Some ancestors have other things that they're trying to do. Some ancestors have to reincarnate again. So there's multiple reasons an ancestor may not want to be on your altar or they may not be receptive to being on your altar. You may not get signs that they are present, probably because they aren't. So don't force it. Don't try and force your ancestors to be on your altar. Don't try and force communication with them. And make sure that you're calling the benevolent ancestors who mean me no harm. Don't be calling out just anybody. Don't just be like, oh, ancestors. No, make sure you're specifying. Intentions matter. So your intention is to call your benevolent ancestors who mean me no harm. All right. And our last segment, our last chapter, our last topic is going to be setting up an altar. <laughs> So this is what people always want to know. Like, how do I set up an altar? Where can I set up an altar? When do I set up an altar? So many questions about altars. So the first thing that I want to say personally is that an altar can be anywhere. You can have an al altar in a little Altoids can. If that's what you have to use, that's what you have to use. Our ancestors are known for working with what they have, working with what they had. You know, that is what hoodoo is about using the roots and all types of things work with what you have your altar can be in a shoe box your altar can be in a drawer your altar can be on a shelf you know so it's really about working with what you have your altar can be a table my altar is a table so your altar your altar can even be a ledge like up here this is part of my self-love altar but it can be a ledge you know like it can be whatever you need it to be just make sure that your intentions are pure when you're doing it now that that is said that an altar can be anything an altar can be anywhere let's talk about some basic altar essentials things that you must have on your altar you want to make sure that you're using a white cloth for your ancestor altars a white cloth is necessary when i first started i was using a black cloth and the i could feel the energy change when i started using a white cloth instead so you do want to make sure that you're using a white cloth the the color of purity the color of clarity the color uh, of just pure you know just a white cloth with no energies attached to it because colors have energy so you want to just use white it has the energy of godly energies pure energies clear energies clarity use a white cloth as you can see you can use corresponding cloth colors on other altars but as far as ancestor altars go it's going to be a white cloth every single time the white cloth is going to do it you're also going to want to make sure you have water water you don't want your ancestors dehydrated you don't want them thirsty you don't want ravenous spirits okay so you want to make sure that you're giving them water with the intention of 
refreshing and replenishing their souls, making sure that they're hydrated, hydrating their souls. Having water on your altar is a great thing because it can provide clarity as well. It can provide clarity, clear intentions, all those types of things. So making sure you have water on your altar is very, very important. Another thing is like I was saying previously, pictures or a list of names pictures or a list of names it's not necessarily an essential but it's nice to have direct ways to call out to them you can call the ancestors known and unknown named and unnamed if you can't find pictures if you if you're adopted and you don't know who your bloodline ancestors are you can also venerate your adopted family if you're adopted but if you don't know who your ancestors are directly if you don't know their names if you don't have pictures if you're adopted like you have no way to contact your blood lineage then you can just continue to call the ancestors known and unknown named and unnamed who mean me no harm right another thing is food food like i said you don't want ravenous ancestors you don't want hungry spirits so you want to make sure that you leave them food it can be cooked meals, it can be fruit, it can be a slice of toast and some coffee. Like you just wanna make sure that you're leaving food on their altar and not no processed junk food. Don't be over here putting hot Cheetos on your altar. Don't be over here leaving your ancestors um, sugar babies and candy. Well, it's okay to leave candies, hard candies if they liked hard candies, but don't just be out here putting like hot Cheetos on your altar. You don't want overly processed food on your altar. You want to kind of get things that you can compost if necessary so that's what I try to do because I have a compost so I like to put things on my altar that can be composted so I don't like to put too much meat on there the only time my ancestors really get meats and rice and all that kind of stuff is if I'm cooking or if someone in the house cooks and I leave it as an offering other than that most of the time I try to put fruit on my altar I like to put fruit bowls um you can put just a regular unsliced apple if you want to you can put an uncut orange whatever works for you do what you can you don't need to do too much you can start small and work your way up you can put other things on your altar as well so you can put crystals i like to put crystals and on my altar i like to put black tourmaline obsidian smoky quartz whatever you have for protection a protection crystal to protect your ancestors and to protect yourself you want to have um, a white candle. A white candle is pretty much essential. Um, I forgot to mention that, but that can be something that you always have on your altar. It doesn't have to be lit. As you can see, mine isn't lit, so it doesn't have to be lit, but you can have a white candle on there at all times. When you are venerating your ancestors or when you're calling out to them, you want to make sure that you do light a white candle to bring in, invite in their spirits, okay? Another way to invite in their spirits, like I have written on here, was Number two, some noise makers. So some people have a maraca, so, maraca? I'm not sure, but some people have like little shakers that they use on their altars or at their altar to call in the spirit. For me, I like to use a song bowl. I dig it three times, one, two, three, and I call them in. Another way to do it is if you don't have a noise maker, if you don't have a bell, if you don't have a maraca, you don't have a song bowl, you can knock on the floor three times and call your benevolent ancestor. So I'm calling out to my benevolent ancestors who mean me no harm, right? You can do that on the floor or you can do it on top of their altar space or whatever it may be. If you have a shoebox, put the lid on, knock on it three times, calling your benevolent ancestors and then do what you, whatever you're doing at your altar. People like to put family heirlooms on their altar. So things that have been passed down for generations, it can be a pair of earrings, it can be a pair of glasses, it could be whatever, it could be a family note that we continue to pass on, whatever it is, just do make your altar you put your altar because your ancestors are within you no matter what so even if you don't have an altar you taking care of yourself is you taking care of your ancestors because their blood is your blood they run through your veins so just doing things like that is helpful making your altar you making your altar personalized to who you are where you come from all those types of things can help right last thing that you can put on your altar to personalize it to you is some herbs you can put herbs for protection herbs for love um for me personally before i set up my altar before i even put my clock down i like to take some palo santo drawn onk and put some protection oil at all four corners to make sure that we are protected from every angle my ancestors are protected from every angle and i do this with all my altars any altar that i have i make sure that it's protected i protect everything that I, that that's related to me okay because one thing about me 
I'm gonna be protected. You could try it if you want to, but I, I advise you not to. <laughs> Like I was saying, just personalize it to you. You don't have to do exactly what I do. You don't have to do exactly what anyone else does. Just do what you can, do what you have, work with what you have and work your way up. Because let me tell you something, when I first started my hoodoo journey, when I first started venerating my ancestors, when I first became spiritual, I didn't have nothing. You know what I had to my name? Four crystals. That's all I have. I didn't have an altar. I didn't have any of the stuff that you see behind me. I didn't have anything. Like literally I have four crystals and I worked my way up. I was using a sheet, a black sheet when I first started my ancestor altar. So that's why I'm just like, you can use what you have. Just make sure that when you have the ability to go and change, make sure that you're changing it when you have the ability to do so. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. Even if you do practice hoodoo, I hope you gain something from this video. If you practice any other cultures or not cultures, if you practice any other practices, any other spiritual practices, I hope you gain something from this video. I hope you learned something. The intention was to teach. So I hope that you guys learned something. Feel free to leave a comment below. Feel free to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Don't forget to follow me on my Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Everything is the same at Ashe and Ascend. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for your support. It's much appreciated. Bye.